Hey, shalom, shalom. All right, let's give it one more second here to make sure we are right. Appears to be good. So I'm gonna wait for the, the team. There it is. All right, Kanye, hey, Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam, Shalom, friends. It's your brother Arya back at you again with another live lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And again, of course, we want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Badash. And Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which we pray and worship to. But we can't do so unless we go through the only begotten Son, which his name is Yahweh Shai. So it's Yahweh Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Badash in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right. I also want to give double honors to the apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule and teach well. These elders have been out there for many years, uh, decades even. Uh, elders have been out there before a lot of brothers were born. All right, we'll put it like that. You know, you know, some over 30 years. Um, you know, and, and then you got the other Akim, you know, like myself, uh, that's been in this truth for, you know, for a short season. Okay. And we do our best to continue on in the spirit for the path for the foundation that was laid before us uh, do spirit and power Yahweh Bashem Yahshah using our elders so double honors to our elders and the apostles of GMS Great Millstone who rule and teach well and salutations to Ka Akim out there on the four corners of the globe that push the word out with truth and sincerity and you brothers out there that just may be listening and learning may Yahweh Bashem Yahshah Barakatham and increase you in knowledge wisdom and understanding and again, it's your brother Ariel from the Tampa Bay camp. Back at you again. Lord willing, it's edifying. Just want to speak to the spirit. You know, watch a couple of videos today. Watching the elder brother Manatha Zakba from from uh, uh, South Carolina. You know, kind of going in on, on a subject I kind of wanted to touch on today. And I was watching a little bit of the video. I didn't watch it all, but you know, you know, brothers brother was you know speaking a lot of truth of you know about you know family. You know how you know. How death and pain can just come upon you, you know, as, as the scripture says, and I believe we read it. I'm gonna read it now in the book of Sarat. Because ultimately, you know, the point of me saying all this is because Jake, of course, when I say Jake, we're speaking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Jake is just slang for uh, the sons of Jacob. Okay, the Israelites, in other words, the Israelites. Whether you accept being an Israelite or not. You're an Israelite, okay? We're the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we just say Jake for short. And Jake, you know the truth. One way or another, the truth was given to you and you re either rejected it or you put it off, okay? You may not have outright rejected the truth, but you may be putting it off and it may sound good, but you know, you don't really feel like getting to all the studying and you're not trying to change your ways. You know, what well, the Lord is giving you a, a, you know, that olive branch and, you know, you keep slapping the Lord's hand away. What do you think is going to ultimately happen? Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7. It says, make no tarry and turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of judgment, the day of rent, vengeance, brother. That thou shalt perish in the day of vengeance. So if you're tarrying with this truth, you're putting it off. Day to day pass by, each day pass by. You, you know, you you have the uh, you know uh, elementary understanding of the truth. I'm an Israelite. Okay, the so-called white man's Esau Edom. He's the devil. Or right, we have to repent. Okay, it starts there. You have that understanding, but you still out here in the world doing this, that, and the other. Not even considering what the Lord is requiring of you as as a as an Israelite, what do you think is going to ultimately happen? The Scripture says, um, let's, let's read that part again. It says, "For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth." So, when you least suspect it, that's when judgment and pain can come can come upon you. Whether the Lord takes your your soul from the earth, or or whether He just jacks you up and puts you in a in a in a very serious position, man. You know, whether it be you being, the, you know, you lose your, you know, your eyesight or you're in a wheelchair now, you paraplegic, quadriplegic, okay, brain damage, you're in a coma, 
okay? Or you die, you get sick, you know, you in a car accident. And I hate talking about stuff like this because I, you know, I don't like death. I don't like thinking about it or talking about it. But this is something that we must, you know, bring up. Because this, this is, that's the Lord's judgment. These are the things that happen that we see every day that we have to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, make public. We have to publicize. We see these things on the news all the time. Such and such people died. There's shooting over there in, in a Virginia college school, whatever, somewhere. Football player shooting, shooting niggas, killed people. Uh, over here, there's a bridge collapse. A hundred some odd people died. Over here, uh, another hundred some people got trampled over there and died. Uh, over there, there's a, a, a mudslide killed so many people, this many people. A drone strike over there. People are dying, man. Like it's hard for us to ignore that fact. So we, what do we do instead of ignoring it? You know, we, we filter these things through the scriptures because maybe, just maybe, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites, the sons of Jacob, okay, just maybe the fear of the Lord will come upon you and and you start changing your ways because you you have the, the fear of the Lord on you now. I don't want that to happen to me. So what do I need to do to possibly, you know, put protect myself from my household well it starts with you as a man you gotta you, you gotta you gotta repent we have to repent okay well you know i'm not just speaking you you i have to do the same thing the fear of the lord came upon me i'm like oh shoot and you know what do i need to do you figure it out all right the spirit starts work with you and then you know the lord starts directing your steps and guiding your path and so you, you know, you get the the, the the true breakdown, the true knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of what it is that is and what it is that's not. The truth. You got to start getting this. You can't just sit here and start lollygagging in this world in 2022. There's a lot of things happening that don't take for granted, man. These things can easily happen to you. Shit, I got loved ones here in this world. They, you know, they're in the world world, you know. You know, like I got mother and father and mother. I got two sisters. I got, you know, you know, this, that, and the third. You know, <laughs> there's people that I care about. You know, you know, I'm not cold hearted. So you warn them, you know, and you know whether they get it or not. You know, they may get it. They may be with you to a certain extent. In that, not a way they're gonna change all their ways and be out there with you, but they might support you. And maybe that's enough for the Lord to have mercy on them. But if you're not even trying yourself, don't expect the Lord to have mercy on you, your household. If you are here being still, you still being a nigga, you're not doing nothing for the Lord. What do you, what do you expect? And even if you're not, you might be serving the Lord with all your heart and all, you know, all your mind. And the Lord still takes somebody from you. The Lord's not playing any games right now. That's why we're we're like we're in the spirit now. Like, you know, it's re we're really anxious, really antsy right now. Like, yo, shit is gonna happen. You know, what the fuck? Are we, you know, what's what, what's gonna happen? But really, at the end of the day, our focus is on the righteous, as it says also here in the book of Second Ezra. Oh, I'm sorry, Second Ezra nine, right? It says Second Ezra nine and thirteen. It says, and I'll read, uh, I'll read verse eleven. It says, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, which is two thirds of our own people. They got a problem with the law, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. A lot of a lot of our people don't even want to hear that name. It bothers them, all right. It cuts them. You know, they 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 feel like oh, here you go again, talking that stuff. So when you bring it up to them, it's like they don't want to hear it because all it does is cut them in the spirit. It says, and they, slack you. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. Because right now you have a, you have a, you know, what appears to be a choice. Obviously the Lord is the one that's directed our steps and he's going to make us get it. If he wants us to get it, he's going to make us, he's going to, he's going to put the spirit of slumber on you. If he wants to put the spirit of slumber on you, if he don't want you to get it, he'll do it. The Lord will do it. We don't know who's what is here. Okay. That's why the scripture says you have to be, dil give diligence to make your call and election sure because we don't know who the Lord chose. So it says, so it says, uh, and they did have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not but despised it, the same must know it after death by pain. So the doors of repentance were opened unto you by the way the prophets, first and foremost, because how is you going to get the fear of the Lord to come upon you unless so someone directs you into that path? 
or a person here on the earth in the flesh, just like you. You got a problem with that? Oh, you just I knew that you nigga that you, got, uh, you used to smoke weed. You used to do a. You're not getting the lesson. You're not hearing what the Lord is. The Lord is reaching His hand. Or look, God's gonna come down here and show you. No, God, ain't, it's not how it works, dude. And a lot of you don't. You, you're so you're so carnal. You don't understand that this is this whole thing. This is a test. And the majority, two thirds of our people, are gonna fail said test. All right, and it's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you your salvation. You're going to have to, as the scriptures say, the same shall know it after death by pain. So you're going to have to go through judgment. Okay? We constantly tell you, warn you about the time of Jacob's trouble, which is we're at the doorstep of that. That's why you see us. We're just like, what, what, what else is it fuck take for you to get this, man? How many people have to be killed by, the, by these devils for you to understand that that that, that death is coming? That evil is, is a foot. You don't believe it. Who the fuck are you anyway? You don't believe it. Who the fuck are you? You got something. Now you got something to say. Oh, the chariots. Are, so if the chariots are, are UFOs, so you're saying the Egyptians were, were in UFOs. Like, nigga, like, you so carnal. Like, it's no point even really talking to you. The Lord is really wrapping this thing up. He don't. The Lord is, is basically is separating his men from, from the, those he don't, he, you know, he don't know. Yeah, you an Israelite, but he don't know you. So he's putting that clear line of distinction in between the righteous and the wicked of our people. And the time's gonna come. We are so close to this thing really popping off that okay, uh, the dollar crashes and then all hell breaks loose out here in America. And now what? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Don't worry about what we're gonna do. Don't worry about what we're gonna do, cause you you could have been cool too. We're gonna be fine. Don't worry about what we're gonna do. I don't know, honestly. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter right now. We're not there yet. It says verse thirteen. The point of me bringing this out, and therefore be now be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is and for whom the world is created. So our focus is on. The, the righteous of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the elect. Okay, the remnant that's down here somewhere on the earth. Okay, there's, there's plenty of remnant down here on the earth right now. Our job is to wake up the elect. We don't even know who that is. We don't even know we're part of the elect. But we get we get the message. Okay, we understand. All right, shit. Somebody got to be doing it. All right, let me, what do I got to do? Let me pick up a fucking hammer and, and go to work too. Nobody else is doing it. Let us do, we'll do it. You know, some of the elect, passed away and they're in the spirit realm but as the scriptures say they're going to be resurrected they're going to come back with Yahweh Shai so we're not worried about that we're not worried about you wicked niggas on this earth because the judgment for you wicked is going to be vengeance still. you don't understand the vengeance of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai like we try to teach you these things and go through the scriptures and the stories and let you know that that God is a very vengeful God he's a powerful vengeful God like this is not a game like the fuck you think God is about you don't scare you? Like, you're not scared? I ain't scared of nothing. Ain't shit can scare me. I ain't. Like, bro, like, this is some serious stuff, bro. You're looking up at the sky. Oh, that look like a UFO. Yeah, what's that? Oh, shoot, that UFO, son. Yo, it's a UFO. You don't know what the fuck that is, dog. That's your nightmare, man. That's a nightmare, bro. That's a curse onto you, bro. You see them lights in the sky be blinking in and out. Oh, shit. Oh, get your camera out. You don't know what that is, dog. We trying to tell you what that is, man. You playing games with it, bro. You don't believe us. Fuck you, then. You don't care anymore, bro. We're going to keep doing this, though. So maybe, you know, those that that are looking for this truth, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahshai, just maybe you look into it through the spirit and be like, what this men talking about? Let me see. Let me let me see. Let me watch another video. Cause this this touched me. Let me watch another video. What's this what's on this man's channel? Let, oh, what's in the recommendation? Oh shoot. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense too. Then you start you shouldn't be obsessed with this. You should when you start hearing this word, you should be obsessed with it. it. Should something should trigger your your spirit to just keep wanting to learn more. And you gotta play you gotta play catch up. I remember when I first came to this thing. And I started watching videos. I was like, damn, where the f I need to learn this. 
You used to start watching videos all day. Every day you're just watching Israelite videos. The only thing you care about doing it for months and months and months until you 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 think you learned enough. You try to find a camp. You got out doing the thing, doing the work, man. Huh? A lot of you people just want to be Americans. You just you just want this life to continue, and you worrying about what you're gonna do next summer. Next summer's not gonna come properly. That's what I'm we trying to tell you. That's a scary thought. Oh, next summer's what do you mean? Next summer's not gonna come. What, what are you saying? Yeah, it might not come for you. Okay, it might not come. That's what we're trying to tell you. We're at the end of the world. We're at the end of a. Uh, uh, a rulership, this kingdom, an era, an age, and it's just gonna happen. It's gonna happen suddenly. That's what we. Try. It's just gonna happen. You're not preparing yourself for it. You didn't even want to learn. You didn't even want to hear what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to tell you some good shit, man. It's not entertainment. It's not we're telling you this for your entertainment. Not to, we're pleading with you, like, yo, bro. You gotta listen to us. You don't have to, but you gotta do it. You don't gotta do anything you don't want to do, but. It will behoove you to, to possibly, you know, maybe look into it. You are spiritual, right? Oh, I'm spiritual. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Why are you spiritual? You should look into this thing. Just consider it. Um, let me go into the book of Hebrews. This is a, uh, um, it's lucky. Let me find it. It's not it. It's not it. Hebrews, here we go. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right, let's read that again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, the living God. I'm talking about the Heavenly Father, God, the Most High. What does that mean? It's a fearful thing. Isn't God loving? Yeah, he, sure, but he's he's also pissed the fuck off, man. You gonna fall into his hands it, you, after getting this this uh, this warning from his men, and you are gonna do the opposite? Because really, the warning from his men down here is is a direct warning from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, you can look at it like that because you know we're the ambassadors. Okay, so at the end of the day, we're telling you this through the spirit. We're bringing out precepts and scriptures and we're breaking it down. You know, you know, trying to teach you. You don't want to be, uh, you, you, I ain't trying to learn from you, what, you my teacher now? You got to humble down, bro. It's not like we coming at you with, you know, a classroom and your homework textbook, like trying to demeaning you. Not, yo, um, my brothers teach, but you know, people that are trying to learn, you know, we're very, you know, we're very understanding because we used to be in that position, man. This is a lot. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of information. I, I can only imagine what it's going to your head, head when you hear this stuff. That's why it's important to you got you got to start with the milk. You got to start with the, the the beginning things. Understanding you're an Israelite. What does that mean? Okay, yeah, you're an Israelite, but but now what? What does that mean? Okay, it's it's very important. It's not just oh yeah, we used to be kings. No, it's this important thing. We, being the children of the Lord, you're an Israelite. You're you're obligated to do certain things. You you you're um you're you're supposed to uphold. A certain presence here on the earth. You're not supposed to just be a nigga. Are you under a, a heavy curse from the Most High? Okay, we can't just outright break the curse. But if the Spirit is working with you, then you you know you, you see what we mean. You you're gonna be able to see above it. You're gonna come out of that Babylonian spirit. Okay, yeah, you're still subject to the curses, as all of us are. However, your mind is 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 has been redeemed. Okay, your mind has been liberated. Now we have to just use patience until the end comes. Till the true end comes. You know we're we're on our way to something spectacular, but we have to be patient. You have to be watching. If you're not watching, then it's just going to come in and hit you like a ton of bricks. And you're not repented yet. The Lord's not going to have mercy on you. You might, but you don't want to take that chance. You want to try to make your call in an election sure. You don't want to sit here and play games with it, being a Babylonian and, and just hope that a brother prayed for you or something like that. No, you gotta, you you better do something, man. You do it. Someone told you. 
the problem is with, with our people is they don't really truly believe. They believe in God, but they believe that they have a, a false understanding of what God is. They think it's just some all loving being that just loves everything. And, you know, they see a flower bloom and oh, that's beautiful. Oh, in the hood, a flower bloomed in the hood. Yeah, it's the most high, but you don't understand what these things mean. You truly don't get it. And we're, tr and we're trying to open your eyes up to it. But clearly the Lord don't want the majority of you. And we, you know, and it hurts us because it's like, damn, our people really ain't going to get it. And we're telling you, it is a fearful thing. The scriptures are telling you, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power. But man, I've seen some things, man, in my day. I've seen some horrible things in my day. Oh, here goes the spamming. I didn't know now they're starting to do that. 69. But, um, spamming on the chat with the bullshit. That's a new bot. I don't have anybody, uh, bomb o'clock. It's all right, whatever. But, um, but, um, yeah, our people, they, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. Uh, you know, and it, it's, yeah, it hurts us, but you know what? We still here. I'm not going to sit here and cry for a bugged out nigga. I'm not going to cry for him. All right. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a continue. Yeah. You know, we sigh and cry for the abominations done in the midst era for sure. We complain continually. But when these, when, when two thirds of our people put to death, when that's in here, worrying about, oh man, he's, he's my brother. These people don't care about righteousness. If they really truly cared about righteousness, they'd be right out there with us. Asking, what, what can I do? What can I do to help? They would be. They stop doing the things that they're doing. They stop being niggas. Okay? You mean stop being yeah, yeah, you gotta stop being a nigga. You have to. Have to. You can't you can't be a nigga and then be in the truth. You can't you can't eat at the what is that eat at the table of of devils in the table. I forgot how it goes. That's what you see like like these um these 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 uh these celebrities that are coming out knowing that they're Israelites. They're trying to eat at the table of of, 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 of the Lord and the table of devils. If somebody know that you can put it up. I don't remember where it is right now. But you can't do that, man. You gotta pick a side. That's what the scripture tell you. Um where's that one at? Revelation chapter three. Jeez Louise, man. This is a Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. This is the words of Yahweh Shai in red letters. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would, thou wert cold or hot. I would, so the Lord is saying that you're, not, you're neither cold nor hot, meaning that you're not, you're not hot for this truth. And neither, and neither are you uh, 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 staunchly on the other side. What it is, is that you're riding the fence. You're trying to, yeah, I, this sound nice. This sound good. Yeah, yeah, con brew, con brew. But you're still in the world. You're not doing no works. You know the name. You know you're an Israelite. And you might even say it to a certain extent. Yeah, we the Israelites. We the Israelites. But you're not doing nothing for the Lord. Here we're trying to oh, correct you on this and that. And then you get offended. Then you got some that know they're Israelites and they may put up some videos sometimes. But then you look at their page, their page be like a year since their last video or something like that. So what have you been doing like that whole year? Then you come back out of the blue, you know, with a five minute video or... Or, or may, you may be able to give you the benefit of the doubt. You might come out with like a, you know, a, a lesson or something like that. And then you're gone for another month or two. Like these people, like you got to, what is your, what is your, then you, and then on top of that, you put the video out and then a lot of, uh, you know, we listen to your lesson. Your lesson is all, the doctrine's all wrong. You're saying that's wrong. Hey, that's wrong. That's wrong. You're leading people, you're leading people not into salvation. You're leading people into a condemnation. You're telling people the wrong things. And then on top of that, you're not really doing the work. You're not, you're not really, you haven't really repented. You don't take counsel. You don't take correction. And then yeah, you, you might get caught out there in the world doing smoking cigarettes. Oh, but you an Israelite. 
That's what we're trying to say, man. The Lord would just rather you. What did it say? It says so. Be, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I would spew thee out of my mouth. So since you're not cold, neither are you hot. The Lord is just gonna kick you. He's gonna spew you out of his mouth. In other words, he's gonna destroy you. All right, you're not gonna get salvation. You're unworthy of 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 the the mercies of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. You don't deserve it, and that's a sad thing, because we're fight. We're fighting for for salvation. We're fight. This is a spiritual battle. We're fighting for the Lord to have mercy for us, man. We're doing everything in our power, and we we know we can do more too. That's the scary part about it. But we we we're, we're pushing forward, man. We. We really believe that the Lord will have mercy on us if we do this work and change our ways. And then you got people out here that are not doing shit, bro. And then they over here saying that we're doing it wrong. No, we're not, dog. We're doing it right. The fuck you talking about? We're doing every everything we're doing is right. And if by chance a brother does something wrong, a brother correct him. Because we love each other. We're not gonna say and let a brother go the fuck off. No, if some brother says something wrong, you did something wrong, we're gonna correct the brother. Not gonna kick him out and you know, and, you know, make fun of him and no, it, this is a this is a very delicate situation. Now, depending on you know, of course, it's case by case, but you know, we love it. We love our brothers. We're right. We're what we're doing is right. What you're doing is wrong. We're trying to tell you what you're doing is wrong, and we're backing it up to the Holy Bible. Are you on here? You try to say we, you gonna cut us off in the middle of the scripture? What the fuck, man? Let it come out, bro. You don't want to hear it because you know that it's right. You gonna let the whole scripture come out, and then you gonna let the ex explanation come out. Now you, now, now you're, you're, you're bound by that. Okay, there's no cloak for your sin. Yeah, I wish I said that in John the the fifteenth chapter. Now, because we told you. Now you heard it. Ooh, now what? You gonna still do the wrong thing after we told you and broke it down for you? To see, that's what it means. That 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 means that that means that. So you so in conclusion, you gotta stop being a nigga, and then you still continue to be a nigga. What you gonna? What you think is gonna really happen? The Lord's gonna destroy you. Gonna obliterate you, man. This is not the time for that, man. We got it. We got it all humbled down, bro. Okay, you hear? You happen to stumble across these videos? That's a blessing, bro. The Lord is reaching out His hand. I mean, there's still time for repentance. The doors of repentance are still open, technically. Okay, we're not in the time of Jacob's trouble yet. The doors of repentance are still open. Brothers can still come into this truth. Sisters can still but start start believing and coming into the truth, to, in, in doing doing their part. But you men, the Lord is calling you men, and you men are starting to act like women. It's not the time to be in your feelings, bro. I know it's, it, it sucks being corrected. No one likes that, bro. I know we're men. We don't like it. I know, but this is about. You know, this is this is really spiritual. This is the Bible. Listen to what we're saying. We're not wrong. We're very confident in what we're saying, bro. A lot of you cats just don't want to get it. You're never gonna get it, and it's all good. You know what? Where's that? Um, we quoted it earlier. In the Book of Romans. This is the Book of Romans. Uh. Some 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 something. Let me see. Romans chapter eleven verse seven. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So the majority of Israel, they're not going to obtain. They they're searching for the truth. They're searching for understanding, but they're going to Egyptology. We got to go back to Africa. Oh, we're not really. The, we're not the Israelites. We're not the Israelites. We're the Africans. We got to go back to Africa. They believe that. They're still holding on to that, bro. How many times? That's some old argument, bro. That our elders have debunked that decades ago. Why are we going to go back to that? But Jake want to hold on to that. Jake want to hold on to that. Everybody, God loves everybody. The Christianity. You got Jake still holding on to Christianity. Talking about God loves everybody. No, he doesn't. How many scriptures have got to pull out to show you that God actually hates people? It's in there. It's in the Bible. Why would we lie about that? Why you don't want to hear the scripture? Let's skip the Bible. Oh, uh, yeah, you could talk louder than us. What the fuck, man? That's rude. Now you can't hear the scripture where it talks about God hating people. You don't want to hear it? You don't want to be corrected? Why not? Because you know, uh, yeah, that means you got to change. 
It's annoying, bro. Verse 8, Romans chapter 11, verse 8. According as it is written, the Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So the Lord has done that to them. That's why it's so that's why it's so crazy that these people who can't get it. You can break it down in, in the most plain English that you know that you that you can muster up. And they're gonna look at you like you have three heads. You break it down, you got charts, you got charts and pictures and everything, and you're going precept upon precept, you're breaking it down, going to the different language so they can have a true understanding of what this word means, the difference of this word and that word. See, that's what the that's what the prophet meant when he said this, and then it, and then it just goes over their head. And or they get upset, they get they get they get mad at you. Yeah, I just believe in God. I just believe that we all should love God. After the whole explanation, they're going to say some shit like that. You're going to break out the whole thing for them about love and hate and the Israelites. And, you know, you're trying to show them love, trying to break some bread with them. And then after every, everything is said and done, well, to me, to me, you motherfucker start with to me, then you know it's a wrap. You know, to me, you know, God is, you know, God just loves everybody. We just all have to be. We're God, we're, we are God. We are our own gods. You motherfuckers talking like that. What can you say to them? You can't say anything. They believe that they're God, bro. So, you, let, you know, you try to correct them. It doesn't work. Then, you you know, you just move on, bro. You know, maybe the Lord will have mercy on them. Maybe not. More than likely not. And if somebody you care about. Hey, hey, pray for him or something, you know, but at the end of the day, man, we, we are so close to this thing being wrapped up. The Lord ain't got time for, for, for us to, um, worry about other people that don't want to learn this. Okay. They've already made their mind up. Okay. You know, Lord put the spirit on you to say something to them. Cool beans. But you know, just leave it at that at this point. This is the book of second Ezra, chapter one, verse 25. It says, Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. Ooh, cut. Did you forsook the Lord? How did you forsake the Lord? You, you forsook his prophets. You had a problem with this. You have a problem with this word. You don't like it. You don't like God's word. You hate God? What kind of fucking monster are you? You hate God? It says, seeing ye have a... a Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will also forsake you. When ye desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you. So when you start looking for, for the Lord, you can go into Proverbs, the first chapter, and, and, and say similar stuff. When you really need the Most High to deliver you, the Lord's going to act like he don't know you. He don't hear you. I can't hear you. Huh? Is someone talking? Then you get your ass hit by a fucking Mack truck. Judgment is coming upon this world, bro. Upon this America. Upon this, this, uh, this, you want to call it a kingdom? All right. It's about to fall soon. So we're giving you a warning that the Lord is still has his, he still has his, his arms stretched out to, to, you know, for, for mercy. All right. But, but you have to, you have to seize it. You got to grasp onto it, man. And again, as we read in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, hey, the Lord has put the spirit of slumber on our people. So there's just people here that are programmed not to get it. Us, as spiritual men, we have to be able to discern that. Okay, this is one of the people that the Lord don't want. Don't even sit here and try to get these people to understand you. If they clearly rejecting it, just, just move on. Because the Lord has put the spirit of slumber on these people. So you know what the hell with them. It's okay. It says, whenever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you. For ye have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. Our people are the most wickedest people when it comes to that. So the Lord's not going to hear you. not going to have mercy on you. Because you over here doing, you know, you being a goddamn criminal. It says, uh, ye have, verse 27, ye have not as if it were forsaken me, but your own selves saved the Lord. So you, you did it to yourself. Stop hitting yourself. You did it to yourself, though. You can't blame that on the Lord. You can't blame your judgment on the Heavenly Father. Because everybody has a chance to get this. We have to make our calling and election sure. We have to, uh, what does it say? 
in the um, Philippians, it says, it says this. Let me get that there. Philippians chapter 2, verse, don't rip the book, bro. Verse 12, Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not always in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, here's the point. Work out your own salvations with fear and trembling. You have to work out your own salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So you, if you're not working out your own salvation, don't expect salvation. All right, expect to be left down here. All right, <laughs> that's no, come on, bro. That's going to be a heartbreaking, bro. That's going to be a heartbreaking situation for our people. You left down here when well, you see the you see the man, men of the Lord being delivered in the chariots and your punk ass is left down here to die in a nuclear war like or whatever may come upon you. A nuclear war is, was prophesied. Wisdom of Solomon chapter five, verse one. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and may no account for his labors. It's what we do around right the highways and hedges in front of the so-called white man. Verse two, when they see it. They shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they've looked for because they're going to see the deliverance of the elect, of the remnant down here. And they're going to be called into the chariots of salvation. And then you're going to be left down. When I say you, I'm talking about these two-thirds, these people that, that don't believe. They're going to be left down here witnessing that. Possibly waiting for their turn to be called up. But it never, their turn never comes. You see, you see this person over here being called up and that person over there being called up and it's such a magnificent sight. And you you kind of believe, but you didn't really believe and you you hoping the Lord may have mercy and you never called up. Now what? And if you keep reading, it says, verse three, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes a derision and a proverb of a proverb for a reproach. We fools account of his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the most high and his lot among the saints? They're gonna you're gonna be feeling fucking fucked up, bro. Like damn. It says, uh therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Yeah. You're gonna, it's, it's, you're gonna, you're gonna understand now. It's gonna be too late. Now you understand, dog. After it's too late now. You didn't believe, bro. We're trying to tell you. We're trying to, like, yo, get with it. It was, it was, it was too, it was too weird. It was too science fiction for you to believe. It was too off the wall for you to believe. So you, you didn't believe it. And then when it finally comes to pass, you're gonna be like, oh, it was fucking true. Yeah, it was true. It was this. Is, it's gonna happen, man. Yes, UFOs are gonna come and they're gonna. It's, all that's gonna happen. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah, when you say it, it sounds crazy, but it's, it's in here. You have to believe. You say you believe in God. You gotta believe the word of God, man. It's all in here. And then we starting to see signs of it happening. So it's like, okay, well the Lord is showing us the signs. How come these other people don't see it? Because the Lord has blinded them. But then when it happens, you're going to be like, damn, you're going to be scared, man. Because you know you, you know, death is not far away. Death is not far off. We told you that this was going to happen, that you could be saved before the destruction. And then you're at, your punk ass is still down here. And you're going to have to endure that fire. And yes, it's going to hurt. We read it earlier, death by pain. Why did the Most High make it a point to say that? And then when you go into the book of Revelation, was it 19 or 9? There's a, I gotta remember. I think it's 9. Let's see if I can find it. Swiftness. Okay. I gotta find it. Sitting here somewhere. Give me a second. Da da da. Forgive me. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Oh, boom. This is Revelation chapter 9, verse 19, talking about the missiles. I'll start at verse 18. It says, by these three was a third part of men killed. All right. Third part of man being the wicked. Okay. The so-called white man destroyed, finally destroyed, beat, conquered, defeated. 
by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which is issued out of their mouth. All right, that's talking about the nuclear destruction that's coming. It says for their power is in their mouths. This is this is this is a very crude description of a, of a nuke. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails because what in the in the mouth or the head of the missile. Okay, that's where the payload is. That's where the destruction is. Okay, and then it says also in the tails because that's where the, it's propelled. You see the you see the um, the fire just propels the missile. Okay. This is a vision, okay? It says, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Okay, it hurts. Okay, so you're going to feel this pain. And it says the tails like serpents, because again, it's that, it's that, um, it's that contra that leaves behind. It's a, a clear tail. When you see, when you look at look at some of the test launches, the Russian uh, Sarmet launches, it got that hot fire tail, that purple fire in the back. That's what the that's what the that's what um John Revelator saw, John the Revelator saw, man. And then with it said, with that it does hurt. So so yes, when the nukes drop, you, it's not just gonna be a quick death. Your spirit is gonna feel every bit of that pain. It's gonna probably feel like an eternity to you. Yeah, it's gonna be an instant. But to you. Who's feeling it? The Lord is gonna be gonna house your spirit in that thing. And it's gonna feel like an eternal. I'm, you know, I'm speaking as a man. I don't know, but it clearly says it's you're gonna have death by pain. It's gonna hurt. The nukes are gonna hurt. You're gonna feel it. That's why we're trying to warn you. This is like this is the worst judgment. This is the that this means that God ain't dealing with you, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai was never dealing with you. If you put you do that, that means you basically numbered amongst the wicked. You're going to die the death of Esau. You're going to die the death of a heathen, the Edomite. You don't want to die like that, bro. We're trying to, come on, bro. Like, snap out of it already, dog. This is going to happen. This is really going to happen. Yes, America's going to be destroyed with nuclear fire. Like, this is in the Bible, man. That's the, that's the, this is going to turn into the lake of fire. It's not going to go into hell, the hell underneath the earth and the devil's down there. It's, that's some fable, bro. It's not what it's talking about. This is some real stuff, bro. God, yep, I read it earlier. Second Edges chapter 9, verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. Because you loathe the laws, the, the Lord's law. You had a problem with the Lord's law. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear his prophets. You thought you had the answers. You wanted to be the smart guy. You didn't like us having all this knowledge. So you wanted to step up. You wanted to be the smart guy. And everything that the prophet said, you said the opposite of it. You are you trying to wind up dog? You trying don't just chill out, bro. You're wrong, bro. Just, you ever been wrong before? Well, you got 100% on all your tests? What you do? You argue with the teacher? Nah, that was right. Two plus two is 15, you see? That's right. You got to mark that right. Fuck is your problem, bro? You won't say nothing to your teacher, but you but you see, you see when, when brother looks like you, says something to you, you don't want to take correction from you. You take correction from the so-called white man. You watch his documentaries. You people are fucking hypocrites, bro. The Lord's gonna do away with you, man. I can't stand that shit, bro. When you did, you don't, you act like you act like you're not a hypocrite. We call you out on your hypocrisy, and you act like you know you don't respond. You think it's gonna happen to you, bro? The Lord's gonna do away with you. You gonna remember what we said? That's why we don't even have to lift a finger. But we just we just tell you straight up, man. The Lord's going to destroy you, bro. You know? Let's go ahead and end it there. You know, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, and also double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule and teach well, and salutations to the Akim out there on the four corners of the globe, pushing the word out with truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. Peace.